teaching writing can be a mentally draining process with so many different moving parts and so little time offered to teachers in properly training them these best teaching strategies, it can be the most dreaded time for both the teacher and the student. In this video, I'm gonna share some effective strategies for how to teach introduction and conclusion paragraphs. Now, hold on with me because if you don't teach introduction and conclusions, don't stop watching this video because you can use some of the strategies that I share here to be able to support some of your more advanced writers. Hello everyone, my name is Bridget Spackman. I'm a multi-age teacher in central Pennsylvania. I teach fourth, fifth, and sixth grade learners across all areas. I have a passion for ELA, authentic instruction, and rigorous teaching. So if you'd like to hear more videos like this, go ahead, like, subscribe, and be sure to hit that notification bell so you can get notified every time I go live or I upload a new video. Introduction and conclusion paragraphs can be a real challenge to teach. Students can already struggle with trying to get their ideas onto paper, and if they're not given some sort of a formula to their writing, then the introductions and conclusions can be a little sparse, or they might even lend themselves to not really giving the reader a really good picture of what the writing is going to be all about. So how do we provide really good effective strategies to help students organize their thinking and put them into an introduction and conclusion that's going to match the writing of the entire paper? I'm going to be sharing a very simple organizer that you can create on your own so that you can help students be able to organize their thinking a little bit better. Now remember, if you're a Bridging Literacy Community member, this is going to be a completely free resource. You can head over to your library library, go to your resources and download these today. And if you're somebody who's interested in the Bridging Literacy membership, I'm going to leave some links down in the description box so that you can go and check it out. But for now, let's go ahead and jump right on in. So I'm going to tell you that it's probably helpful to go ahead and have their body paragraphs written first. I know that seems a little bit like all over, but it is really beneficial for students to go ahead and have an idea of what their writing is going to be all about. So whether you're a fourth, fifth or sixth grade, teacher have those basic body paragraphs done using text structures, main idea, key details, anything that helps students be able to organize their thinking a little bit more, but have those already written. Once you have those written out, then you're going to want to introduce the triangle. So the triangle is going to be a very simple organizer that allows me to help students kind of picture what an introduction and conclusion paragraph is going to look at. But first, before I show you this strategy, I want to show you a couple of my students writing. So these are going to be informational writings that they've completed. I want to go over each of the different elements and what this is going to look like in their writing overall. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you their writing pieces. So here you're gonna see two informational texts that my students have written. One is on Ray's MTB and the other one is going to be on cookies. So let's look at what these introduction paragraphs are, are, are like. So this first one here is going to be an introduction. You can see it's its own paragraph here. And at the very beginning, it kind of starts with, my grandmother sits on a rocking chair, sipping warm tea. I eagerly await for her to finish, as she has already promised to make something with me. Once she finishes her tea, she gestures towards me to follow her into the kitchen. She pulls out her cookbook, tilted, titled Chocolate Chip Cookies. Cookies have always been a fun and easy treat to share with others. Without the, the sweet snack, St. Nicholas may, not, may stop visiting your house. Cookies come in multiple different shapes and sizes, take a series of steps to make, and have many similarities and differences. So automatically you can tell that this is going to be an informational text about cookies. She does a really nice job of just kind of organizing, introducing, and then jumping into here's what this topic is and here's what you're going to be learning about. Same goes here. So we have the Ray's MTB. We, and uh, this student starts it off with, one day you're outside with your friends riding your bikes and one of your friends dares you to go inside an abandoned facility building. You reluctantly go inside, not wanting to back down, but you find a secret bike park and you invite your friends and tell them that we should keep it a secret. Bikes have been here for centuries and over the years, people have made trail bike parks for us to enjoy. With bikes, we develop new bike parts like suspension, 
Um, if we didn't have bike parks like Ray's MTB or Trails Park like Judy, uh, John Rudy Biking would not be so popular or even still be here. Ray's have many varieties of types of bikes. They also don't recommend road bikes and they don't allow motorized vehicles in their building. So they automatically kind of introduce this to you. They hook you as a reader. They tell you a little bit about it and then they get into here's the meat of what we're gonna be talking about. So what the students do here in their writing is they use three different parts. The first part is that they hook you as a reader. They gain your interest. They kind of help you to be able to paint a picture of something that's happening. The second part that they do is that they introduce you into the topic, what it is that they're gonna be talking about. They bridge what it is that they've described into what their paper is going to be all about. And then the final piece is that they give you the thesis statement. And this is where students really focus in on what they're going to be explicitly talking about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on in to the organizer. So this is going to be the introduction brainstorm organizer. Within this organizer, you're going to notice that it's an upside down triangle. This is really important to remember. So the first part that we have is our hook. This is again where we're describing the topic, helping the reader to be able to paint a picture of something. We have the bridge and then finally we have our topic sentence, which is where students are going to write this here. So again, uh, if you are in the Bridging Literacy community, you're going to be able to get these resources completely free inside of the resource library. Um, but with this here, what you do is you kind of help students be able to articulate their thinking using these three different parts. And what I normally tell students is that this is about one to two sentences long. So one to two sentences. Your bridge is going to be about two to three sentences long. And then it's going to end up with one sentence here. So it's going to be a roughly between, um, you know, four to seven sentences in total for your introductory, introductory paragraph. Again, this is for fourth, fifth, and sixth grade kiddos. So with this, here's like an example that I have given my students before. And here you can see that I did it all about cameras. So my topic was all on cameras. I started it by helping them kind of get an idea of something. So I told my kids, I wanna think about a moment when I would use a camera and kind of paint that picture for my readers. So here it says, today is the day you and a friend finally get the chance to visit the Natural Museum. You've been waiting, and I, you can tell I missed a word here, but you've been waiting three months to capture the king of the dinosaurs, the T-Rex. And then I tell students, did I mention anything about cameras here? No, but I inferred it because they have the word capture here. So we can have conversations about what that exactly means. And then I tell them that the entire purpose of the bridge is for students to start kind of broadly talking about it. So I mentioned capturing here. I'm gonna to wanna to talk about that here in the bridge. So this is where I say, cameras have been capturing moments for over a century. Without them, we would not know so much about our past. As the years have progressed, so have the quality of the images. Obviously, again, I'm very broad, I'm staying big, I'm not really going into a ton of key details. I'm keeping it to where everybody can kind of imagine cameras in general. The topic sentence is the most important, and this is where we are going to list out each of our three paragraphs using the what are we talking about? The, I'm sorry, the who that we are talking about and the what. The what is gonna have three different parts. So the who in this case is my cameras. And then the what is going to be defined by what are the three different paragraphs that I already written out. Well, my first paragraph is talking about the variety of styles. My second paragraph is gonna talk about the options for taking photos and videos. And then the, my final paragraph is gonna talk about the range and cost. So my who is my camera, my what is what I talk about in each of my three individual paragraphs. So you can see in this method for helping students be able to organize their thinking, they're able to really define each of those specific sentences and what they should look like and kind of have a really good flow to where they start to lead into the actual information pieces of their body paragraphs. 
What I like to tell my students is if we think about it in the one to two, two to three, one sentence, and we break some of those down, it doesn't seem as overwhelming. So I usually will start by introducing the introductory brainstorm. We talk a little bit about the thesis or the topic sentence, and then I have my students write that sentence because that is going to be the most important sentence of their entire paragraph. Once we do that, then I give them approval and they go back and they start kind of sketching out what their introductory paragraphs will look like. What I wanna do now is I want us to go ahead and look at one of my students' um, writing and we're going to identify each of those different three elements within their paper. Okay, so let's go back and look at the cookies. So the first part is going to be the hook. This is gonna be where you help the reader imagine something so that they have a good idea and they wanna make some sort of a connection to the, uh, the reader. This is all intended to hook them. So here you can see she has the, my uh, grandmother sits on a rocking chair sipping tea. I eagerly await for her to finish as she's already promised to make something with me. Once she finishes her tea, she gestures toward me to go into the kitchen. So she has three sentences there that will help her readers kind of make a connection and start thinking of this. And then she starts to lead into um, the cookies here. So cookies have always been fun and easy treat to share with others. Without them, the sweet snack uh, St. Nicholas would not visit your house. That final sentence here, you have the cookies continue and they come in multiple shapes and sizes, they have a series of steps to make, and they have a lot of similarities and differences. Notice that she started with their who, who is this all about? And then finally they have their what. So we know that they come in different shapes and sizes, so she's going to talk about the variety of cookies. And then finally, she's gonna talk about the steps and some similarities and differences between different types of cookies. So already she has this introductory paragraph that's really gonna help paint a picture of what writing, of what her writing is going to look like. Now remember, this is a really hard skill to learn. And honestly, I recommend that if you are going to be starting with introductory and conclusion paragraphs, I would start with one, make sure students feel really confident in that one area, and then start to add some of those conclusion paragraphs a little bit later on in the year. Now, if you're somebody who has to have an introduction and a conclusion paragraph right from the get-go, because that's the requirement for your school, then I would say, make sure you're using this strategy to help students kind of visualize what this looks like. So now that we've talked about an introductory paragraph, let's talk about what a concluding paragraph looks like. So with a closing brainstorm, you're going to see that the triangle is back. However, the triangle is right side up this time. And so the way that I have my students picture it, and if you kind of look at it here, we have the topic sentence, we're restating the topic or the thesis state the sentence, here we have the bridge, but instead of the bridge, we're gonna see it as in we're connecting to the reader, which is really, really important. When we make connections with our reader on the topic, the reader is more likely to either take it more into consideration and wanna learn more from you, or they're going to continue, um, they're going to actually go through and do something that you're asking them to do at the very end, especially if this is like an art opinion or an argumentative paper. And then finally, we have a hook, but in this form, it's with a closing thoughts. So you can see that it's very, very similar and just the approach that we're taking it is gonna look a little bit different, but we follow the same format. So we have one sentence here, we have two to three here, and then we have either one to two here. So the students have this very clear understanding of how long it should be. The entire purpose of the concluding paragraph is to really help round it all up, kind of finish it off and have it really polished. But more than anything, it's a time for you as a writer to make sure that students have a very clear picture of what they want their reader to continue thinking about. You wanna leave the reader thinking about the topic even more. You want them to have some thought provoking, you know, concept or 
question or making connections to them so that they feel as though they're invested in that topic. So I try to tell the students that this is the time where you make it all about them. You're connecting it to them and you're making them feel as if they're a part of the story and why this topic is so important to them. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at an example of what a concluding paragraph might look like. Here you can see the closing brainstorm. Again, it's all about cameras. And so I rewrote my topic and my thesis statement, which if you'll look here, it's not exactly the same. And instead what I did is I told students to write like, it is clear, it is evident. So starting with some form of a sentence stem to help kind of guide them in this process. So here we have, it is clear that cameras come in a variety of styles, have many options for taking photos and videos and are offered in a variety of price points. So it's the same, but not the same, same. <laughs> Um, once they have their topic sentence rewritten, again, we're going to connect it to the reader. So here you can see I wrote, so whether you are wanting to capture a special moment or remember an event for years to come, cameras offer us the ability to do so. Without them, we would not so much not know so much about our past. Choose an option that works best for you and you will appreciate the abil ability to look back forever. So cameras can be incredibly useful for capturing the moment just as you would if you were witnessing the great T-Rex for the first time. Notice that I went back and I connected it to this beginning point here where I talked about the T-Rex, I went back and I made that connection. So I typically will try to have kids make the connection between these two pieces in their writing. So now that you've seen the strategy for the concluding paragraph, what that really looks like, how it compares to the introductory paragraph, let's look at one of my students and what their paragraph looks like and be able to identify each of those three elements. So we're back to the cookie print writing and you're gonna see here that here is where the paragraph starts. Um, I would have actually recommended that this actually start down here, but that's okay. Her picture just got moved down just ever so slightly. So we're looking for the three parts for the concluding paragraph. And with the concluding paragraph, again, just to kind of show this to you one more time, we're looking for the topic or the thesis statement. So here in this very beginning, you'll see that she started it by now it is clear that cookies range in flavors take quite a few steps to make and have multiple similarities and differences so there is her, her topic or thesis statement but she used it with a different um, stem to kind of begin so we have a nice transition here into the concluding paragraph from there we're doing the connection to the reader so here's what this one says. Whether you plop a package of cookies in your book bag for snack or enjoy handmade cookies that you made, cookies are always a sweet treat. Without cookies, traditions may be ruined and an easy snack may no longer exist. I love how she connected that. <laughs> so select your favorite type and enjoy it any time. And then she ends it paying attention to how she connects it. Cookies can be an enjoyable snack that cheers you up on a bad day. They can also be a fun treat to make with your grandma. So automatically you can see that she had this connection between her grandmother here and wanting to make it with her and then going back and making that exact same connection right here at the bottom. So even though writing can be incredibly challenging to teach, I think when we have some of those really effective strategies that helps break things down and help students be able to kind of see what it looks like, give them opportunities to dissect it just as I did with this student's writing and have opportunities to kind of break down each of those pieces and get feedback from them, it's gonna make it so much easier. So I hope that this video has helped you in some ways be able to understand 
just effective ways to be able to encourage students in developing really well-rounded introduction and conclusion paragraphs. It doesn't have to be anything that's super hard or fancy, but I think this strategy has really benefited all of my students and I think it could also benefit yours. I hope that you guys enjoyed this very informative, get it? Because information <laughs> writing, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this very informative video on writing introduction and conclusion paragraphs. I would love to know your thoughts on how to write these out, whether or not this strategy is useful for you. Please go ahead and leave it into the comments. I hope to chat with you there. And as always guys, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and also hit that notification bell. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.